Good morning and welcome again to Early Will I Seek Thee. This morning we are going to be continuing our journey as we examine the Word of God as a weapon of war, as a sword. Yes, the shofar is blown for war. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. God arise. Psalm 68 says, let his enemies be scattered. Let his and let the righteous rejoice. We must rejoice with gladness for our God has arisen. The word of God is a sword. Every bit of his word, a sword that can rout the enemy. So we give God praise that he has shown us that his word can be used as a weapon of war. I we give God praise this morning. So I'm going to ask Sister Samarga at this time to pray as we begin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Father, this morning, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Amen. We thank you, God, for yet another truth. Tuesday, Amen. Oh God, we can come, Lord, oh God, in your presence. We thank you that we are numbered in the land of the living and not among the dead. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for perfect health this morning. Thank you for your strength. Amen. Thank you that you are a good God and that your mercies Amen. are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto us this morning, Lord. Oh God. Father, this morning, we just commit this program into your hands, Lord. Even as Amen. we study, oh God, your word as a sword, oh Father God. We pray Amen. this morning that your word will be able to rout, oh God, demons. Your word will penetrate hearts, oh Father God. It will pierce, oh God, asunder. It will divide, oh God. It will bring the division, even now, oh God, from spirit and soul, oh God, this morning. We pray, God, that your word will come forth with clarity. It will come forth with boldness, O oh God. And it shall accomplish that which it has, has set out, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we just commit this session into your hands even now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. As I said to you, we are looking at the word of God as a sword. Psalm 68 reminds us that our God let him arise. Amen. So the shofar is blown. Psalm 68, verse 1a and 3, the Lord arises. The God Let the 
is to depart from evil and we're pulling down evil strongholds built on a foundation of lies the word of god we've looked at it over the months as a fire that consumes and burns away cleanses away water that cleanses we not too long finished looking at the word of god as a detergent the word of god as a hammer, the word of God, as a mirror, as a mirror, the word of God as that incorruptible seed bringing forth after its time, the word of God as food, milk and meat, the word of God as a light to our path, a lamp to our feet, the word of God as a sword. We looked at that, the word of God as a sword some while ago. We looked at the word of God as a sword so a while ago. And, uh, you know, the divides asunder, soul from spirit. And discerns our hearts and our thoughts. The word of God dividing asunder, soul from spirit. May the word of God grow mightily in us and prevail. Because I believe that as the word of God acts all of these, we will then be able to effectively use the word of God as a weapon of war. Not like the sons of Sceva. When it, the word of God works as all of these, fire, detergent, hammer, mirror, and we allow it to grow in, a, in our lives, we will then be able to effectively use use the word of God as a weapon of war to rout the enemy, to rout the enemy. Beloved, I believe that God's heart is that we would be a people where the word of God in all its various actions, in all its various modes of operandi, all the various ways in which God meant it to work in us, as we allow that word of God to do that, we will be a people who will be very effective in spiritual warfare. Just reminding you, Hebrews 4.12, when we first examined the word of God as a when we first examine the word of God as one that divides soul from spirit, it says here in Hebrews 12, it's alive. Quick means alive and powerful. Hebrews 12, it's alive. Quick means alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it does the dividing, the dividing. Amen soul from spirit and when it does that the light of god comes through to our souls and when it comes through our souls our souls get brighter and brighter with the light of god this morning as we look at the word of god as a sword of the spirit in spiritual war for his sister onika is going to be sharing with us that word of god as a weapon Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning again. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. All right, this morning, like Sister Elena would have said, we're looking at um, the Word of God as a sword, right? And you see the picture there on the screen and that she had on the screen, what a sword looks like. However, what is a sword and what is a sword is intended to do? In a nutshell, a sword is an edged blade. It's an edge bladed weapon intended for manual cutting, right? It's for cutting, just like um, she mentioned, Sister Ellen mentioned earlier, where the sword was cutting 
asunder, making the division, all right? So basically in a nutshell, that's what a sword is and that's what it does, right? That's its main purpose. And um, Sister Elena did remind you about Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword so even as you know uh, even as the word of god said sharper than any two-edged sword that's the physical sword right that's a physical sword that can cut and, and you know bring harm to anybody so here's it that the word of god is sharper than that sword sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to divide asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow we're talking about joint and marrow that's going really deep all right and is a discerner of our thoughts and intent of our hearts amen all right so one of our scriptures we would like to go to is ephesians 6 right so can you turn there can you turn there uh, with us please ephesians 6 from 10 to 11 we'll read the entire thing and we are also We'll use our main, the main two folk and the main two verses we'll use is 11 and 12. But even as we read, right, Ephesians 6 from 10, it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. From the Amplified Classic, classic be strong in the Lord. Be in power, in power through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strengthen which his boneless might, uh, boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier with God, which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceit of the devil. 12, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the this, the despotism against the powers, against the master, the master spirit, who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in heavenly places, the supernatural spear. Therefore, put on, therefore put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God and having shut your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the form footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up all, lift up over all the covering shield of saving feet upon which you can quench all the flame, all the flaming miles, missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Amen. So that is from Ephesians 6, 10 this to version, 18. This version. Amplified Classic. Thank you. Thank you. Amplified okay. Classic. So like I said, one of the things I would like to, we would like to zoom in on, because what I'm attempting to do is to show you that the, the battle of our mind, there's a mind, there's a battle, right? The Christian walk in itself is a battle, but there's also a battle of the mind. The mind is a battlefield. All right. So I'm looking at, I'm picking, just making some emphasis on Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Tell us, it tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? That we may be able to withstand the strategies and the deceit of him, right? That's what it says. Why should we put it on? We should put it, why should we put it on for, um, for our struggles? It's not against flesh and blood. 
right? We're not fighting against physical people. We're not fighting against our families. We're not fighting against our friends and our boss and those people, right? We're fighting against um, spiritual. We are fighting against, we're contending, we're contending against the rulers of darkness, right? Against the powers of darkness of this world, forces of this, in this present darkness, spiritual forces, right? Wickedness in heavenly places, all right? We're fighting against things that we cannot really see. So the people that, okay, you know, some, one of your friends might come today and just tell you something so off, right? Don't worry, you're not fighting against that person. You're not fighting against that person, right? You're fighting against the thing that is the force that is behind that. Amen? So remember, one of the things I want us to remember, to remember earlier in our program, you know, Sister Eleanor would have taught us, you know, what, what are strongholds, right? We, th we talked about it, stated that we, it stated that, um, right, strongholds are thought patterns. Thought patterns built on a foundation of lies. Thought patterns, all right? So the way we think, right? What is the pattern that we're thinking, right? So we talk about pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are, um, are thoughts, thought patterns built on a foundation of lies. So like friends, like I mentioned, the mind is a battlefield. And there's no joke in that. No joke in that. It might sound weird, right? But there's no joke in that. The mind is a battlefield. And first Peter 13 says to us, you know, wherefore, guard up the lines of your mind. And you're thinking guard up the lines of your, of your mind. Now, what in the world does that look like? Does our mind have a line? Does our mind have lines? How do we guard up that? How do we put a belt around our mind, something that we can't even see? Right? Because when we're talking about guarding up, right? It's like it mentioned in Ephesians 6. Right? Guarding up your lines. Right? When we're talking about guarding up our lines, it's easy for us to think of an or think or imagine a Roman soldier putting on a piece of his armor, which is fastened with a belt, such as a piece that covers his grind. And as mentioned in Ephesians 6:14, having your loins guard about, right? Which is a protective gear. To guard up means to bind about, especially with a belt, right? So like I mentioned, how do we guard up our minds? How do we put this belt around our minds, right? And, it, and it's a protective gear, it's to protect us, it's to protect our thoughts, right? To protect our minds, all right? The Greek word used for mind is one which means deep thought, deep thought. So we are to protect, keep intact our thoughts. Now, why do we think the enemy would come to tell you a lie? Why do you think the enemy will come to tell you something contrary to what you believe or to what you're having faith for, right? One of the things, he wants to separate us from God. He wants to separate us from God. The other thing is that he wants us to condemn ourselves. He wants us to condemn ourselves. He wants to bring doubt to our minds. He wants to bring doubt to our mind. So that's a lot of times, that's just some of the reason we haven't, I haven't exhausted the list. That's just some of one of some of the few main reasons why the enemy would come to tell you some kind of lie or to tell you something, right? To bring condemnation to yourself, which would kind of, because of course, you know, in the word of God, in it, in Romans 8, 1 says, no, therefore there's, therefore there's no, no condemnation. So the enemy coming out to tell you something different because the word of God, which tells you that there's no condemnation in Christ. There's no condemnation, right? For them that are in Christ Jesus. Remember, we would have gone through that where we talk about now we, you know, we are new creation in Christ Jesus. We now live in the in Christ life. We're no longer who we used to be. Right. right? We are the we resurrected people. The right? Amen. Amen. Right. So we sometimes the, en the enemy does one of that's one of his tactics. That's what he does. He comes to tell you something contrary to what the word of God says. So that, and sometimes, of course, we fall into that. So what the word is telling us <clears throat> that what we need to do is to guard up our minds against the de against the deception of the enemy. Right. And of course, you know, the word of God also says in first John, first John 3, 20. And I so love that verse. It helps me so much. All right, because sometimes that is one of my battles. 
right? It helps us so much, even though if your heart condemns us, God is greater than your heart. And guess what? I love it the way the Amplified Classic put it. Whenever our heart is tormenting, self and making us making us feel guilty and condemn us for we are on we are in god's hands for he is above and greater than our conscience our hearts and he knows piercing and understanding everything nothing is hidden from him amen nothing is hidden from him so the plans and the schemes of the enemy, he sees that and he sees what the enemy is trying to do to you. And even sometimes, you know, we talked about what Peter said last week. We um, Last week, yeah, we talked about what, Pete, you know, what Peter, um, Grace and what I've talked about Peter, you know, and when he said certain things and he wasn't even aware of what is in his heart. And sometimes indeed, we're not always aware of in our, in our hearts, but sometimes our actions says that. And then, of course, the enemy he can you know he's he he sees things sometimes he sees how you're behaving so he just comes with this thing here and now okay trying to pull you down and trying to tell you all of these things so now you know you start to condemn yourself and you start to think all sorts of things so Margie, you want to say something yes i want to say um one of the reasons also being why the enemy actually invades your thought is because as a man thinketh in his heart so it's many times how we think we will operate Amen. Amen. Right? So that's why um, the uh, stronghold, right? We, but we have also just one of the things I want to say to we have um, evil strongholds and there are uh, good strongholds, right? But we talk about the one in the mind where the enemy, the enemy is operating. That would be the evil stronghold, um, stronghold in our right. mind, right? But the word of God as the sword is able you now to call um, become good strongholds i mean if you meditate upon the word so when these thoughts come you cast it down right amen you're replacing these evil strongholds with good ones yes amen 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 yes thank you so margaret right so we talked about um you know there's now no condemnation right of course and you see did you see that do you even did you do you see that how we use the word of god even though when the enemy is just like some Marcus said you know as a man think it in his heart so is he so now we look at what the word of god says listen even though my heart condemns me god is greater than my heart and we tell yeah. god how is exactly is it that we're feeling and we use the word of god we use the word of god and also in romans 8 1 which says hey there, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why am I condemning myself? Why 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 is my heart condemning me? Okay? Yeah. Walk not right. after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. So let's look at how Jesus demonstrated it for us. Right? And we know that Jesus is our example. So let's look at how Jesus demonstrated that for us in Matthew, in Matthew 4, in 4 from 1 to 9. And I want us to pay keen attention because guess what? The enemy is very much familiar with the scriptures as well. He is very much familiar with the scripture. Then Jesus was led, guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, the desert to be tempted, tested and tried by the devil. And he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights. And later he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are, if you are the son of God, you hear that? If you are the son of God, now why he, he already know that he's the son of God. Now why he asking him, if you are telling him, if you are the son of God, remember what he did with Eve in the beginning, right? So we see that his patterns or his strategies, it doesn't really change, right? So he said, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made loaves of bread. But he replied, Jesus replied, it has been written, man shall not live. Man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone. Right? Jesus come back with the word too. So you see there, we have to have an understanding. We know the word. We have to understand what the word says that so that even when the enemy comes with the word of God, we're able to say, well, it is written. This is what God is saying. This is what my father says. 
All right. So we have to know, we have to understand what the word is saying, what it means or what God is implying. All right. So it's be sustained. Right. So the devil, um, about every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Right. Five, the devil, the devil took him into a holy city and placed him on a pinnacle of the temple or a sanctuary. And he said, excuse me. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it. Um, throw yourself down again. He came again with the same thing. If you are the son of God. Now, why do you think he keep repeating that thing? And we could see, right? Even as we continue to read, you will see in every verse, he asks, he's saying to him, if you are the son of God, he's trying to bring doubt to his mind. Right. To saying, OK, you're not really the son of God. Right. Or even if even if you're the son of God, do this here. Right. Do that. And you will see. Right. But of course, the enemy knows how God works. He knows his ways, you know. Don't be don't be surprised. Don't think that he doesn't know. He's very much he's fully aware of the ways of God and how God thinks. And he know the type of man that God is. All right. So, and he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is. And Jesus replied, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you and they will bear you up. They will bear you up on their hands. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. Now that is written in Psalms 12, right? That he will, um, Psalms 91, that he will give his angels charge over you. So remember, God, God, you, we're not supposed okay, put ourselves in danger's way deliberately, right? We're not supposed to do that. And then what do you expect? So he's telling Jesus, okay, throw yourself down. Beloved, God is, a, is a God is, um, he, he knows everything. He knows everything. He knows our hearts. He knows our desires. He knows our motives. He knows what we're going to do even before we think about it. So if you think about, okay, the devil tell you to do that. And you said, this is what the word says. You throw yourself off of that arm, that pinnacle. Believe me, you'll fall right down to the ground. You'll hit Bonita. rock bottom. Bonita, uh -huh. one of the things I want to say, even as we talk about, that was the instruction that was given, right? He was he will give his angels charge over you. It might be... um. That's what the word of God is saying. But the source where it's coming from, right? Where it's coming from, when mm -hmm. it be the evil one, it makes it totally different now. It becomes um, a, a, a lie or a deception because of where it's not that the word is not um, true, but where it's mm -hmm. being sourced from. That would be the answer. So that's where the devil seeks to deceive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen, amen. Right. But also what um, the point I'm trying to put out is that, you know, it's not that um, what he said. Yes, that you said, you know, it's from the source. Right. But the fact is that we should not try to tempt God because throwing ourselves off of our um, pinnacle and then expect, OK, according to what the word says, oh, he will give his angels charge over you. Right. And we see where Jesus, uh, where Jesus replied it, but Jesus replied, right. He will give his angels charge over you and they will bear you up in their hands. And um, sorry, Jesus said, Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written also, you shall not tempt, test thoroughly or try exceedingly to the Lord your God. Right. That's the point I was trying to put over. Right. That even though, yes, he come in with this, hey, throw yourself off. Throw yourself off. Right. And he will give your angels charge over you. So it's having an understanding, knowing the word right so that when he come you know yes the word indeed says this so this is what i should do right so because he word, will give us start a having, start having an understanding of yes. how to use that amen. word amen amen and amen that's how the yes word comes in as a sword. The word, but she as in order to be able to use the word as the sword you have to have an have understanding have an of understanding the and what God Amen. has in mind, right? Or else you might end up seeing yourself in your feet. Ah, uh, Samara, uh, Monica, it looks as though we are coming down to the end. And it seems as though you're going to have to continue next week. So if you can just make some final points as you wrap up this morning. 
Okay. Um, all right. So what I'm saying in short is that our mind is a battlefield. The enemy comes to tell us lies. All right. He comes, he comes to tell us lies so that we can condemn ourselves so that we can doubt what the word of God is saying to us or about us or who we are in Christ Jesus. Right. So when he comes to condemn, when he comes to bring these, these thoughts to our mind, we use the word of God as we're talking about the word of God is a sword. We see where God, where Jesus is demonstrating to us. Right. And like we rightfully said, we just not, it's not just knowing the word, but it's understanding, have an understanding of the word. So where is it? We can use the word as a sword, right? Where we can use the word as a sword, where we can defend, you know, where we can, you know, yeah, defend ourselves, right? So use the word. So when the enemy comes with a thought, right, where he wants to condemn us, we can say, we can use John, 1 John 3, 20, 3, 20 which says, <coughs> excuse me, please, where it says, you know, even if my heart condemns me, God is greater than my heart. And Romans 8, 1 says, there's now no condemnation. All right? So we use the word of God to, you know, to um, where, where the enemy is trying to fight us, where the enemy is trying to bring condemnation and tell us all of these things about ourselves, where the word of God tells us who we are, who we are in Christ Jesus. What he does for us, how he protects us. Beloved, the word of God is our strength, is our refuge, is our help in time of trouble. So we have to have an understanding of the word, not just knowing it, but to understand what it's saying and how to use it. Because we see the enemy knows, right? The enemy knows the word. He brings the word to us. So we have to have this understanding where just like what it is written there, you know, when the enemy said, oh, if it is written, Right, and he used it. He used the word. Oh, and God will give his angels charge over you. You're the son of God. Throw yourself off. Only powerfully and efficiently. Right? Yes. Using it Amen. effectively, efficiently. So efficiently. The word, yes. Effectively. Amen. The word as a sword. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. We have to have it like just as Sister Marga said, effectively and efficiently. There have to be an understanding of the word so that how we will be use it effectively and efficiently. Amen. Sister Eleanor. Amen. 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 This is to be continued. This is to be continued. You know, and they're thinking about even the sons of Sceva. You know, the sons of they, they were saying out in Jesus' name, but they I don't know if we're going to discuss that, but you can get yourself in trouble saying that you're using the word of God if you're not using it as you should use it. It was a joy being with you this morning. And I'm thankful to God for the opportunity. And I want to thank Sister Anika for sharing with us. And no doubt she'll continue next week. And I don't know if any of the other ladies will pick up. Like this video. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Until next week, the Lord 